4K Wolf FW190 was not the most numerous or even the most famous German World War II fighter, but many argue it was the best. The original A variant with BMW 801 air-cooled radial engine first appeared in combat in the second half of 1941. New and improved sub-variants were continuously introduced, but further development required a different engine, and in 1944, FW-190D, known as DORA, entered service. It was powered by Junkers Yuma 213, a liquid-cooled inline engine. The final model of this successful fighter series received a completely new designation. It was called TA-152. In 1944, the German Ministry of Aviation, or Reichsluftfahrtministerium introduced the policy of naming new aircraft models after their chief designers. And the main beneficiary was Focke-Wulf's Kurt Tank. Several versions of the TA-152 were planned, including Age, a high-altitude fighter, and C, a fighter-bomber. The first, and in fact the only one to enter production, was the Age model. This was probably the result of an expected B-29 Superfortress deployment to the European theater. Although Germans didn't have the exact info on B-29 capabilities, they knew that their existing fighters lacked high-altitude performance to deal with this new threat. The first TA-152H prototype was finished in June 1944. Testing proved the airplane's good performance and the type was ordered into production as soon as possible. But due to lack of resources and gradual loss of territory in factories to advancing allies, only 64 were built between November of 1944 and February of 1945. Some sources say that as many as 150 could have been produced, but many were destroyed on the ground. TA-152 H featured a very large wingspan of 14.4 meters, or 47.4 feet. Armament included one 30mm cannon firing through the propeller hub and two 20mm cannons in wing routes. The first operational unit equipped with the TA-152 was 3rd Gruppe of Jagdgeschwader 301. First examples were delivered on 27 January 1945. Pilots accepted 11 H-0 variants and flew them to their airbase at Alteno, south of Berlin. One aircraft was lost on a practice mission on 1st of February after it entered flat spin and crashed, killing its pilot. On 16 February, the Gruppe was moved from Alteno to Zahau because the front line was approaching the base. There are some online sources which mention that a TA-152 pilot, Josef Keil, made a B-17 claim over Berlin on 20th of February, but none of the books dealing with the aircraft mention it at all, and I couldn't find any details of this claim. It is possible that Keil achieved this skill flying another aircraft, or that the claim is simply unreliable. The third group was sent on a large-scale mission against American bomber formations on 25th of February. The first and second group of Jagdgeschwader 301 were also scrambled. Ten TA-152s were vectored towards Braunschweig, along with some FW-190s. Major Gut, the flight leader, reported engine problems and he turned back to base, escorted by two other TA-152s. All three landed safely, and the rest of T-152s failed to make contact with enemy formations. The combat debut of the new type was rather uninspiring. There is another claim mentioned in some online sources that Josef Kyle made on 1st of March. The victim was supposedly a P-51D. Again, the books don't mention this claim at all, and I couldn't find info on P-51 loss on that date which could be matched with it. Next attempt against Allied bomber formations was made on March 2nd. More than 1,200 bombers were launched from England, escorted by 774 fighters. Their targets were chemical plants in Bolen and Hemnitz, 
and also industrial area in Magdeburg. All available aircraft from Jagdgeschwader 301 were scrambled and the third group has sent 12 Ta 152s plus the same number of FW 190As. The Ta 152s were tasked with engaging enemy fighters and enabling FW 190s to attack the bombers. They flew south towards the Harz Mountains and met with other Geschwader aircraft, BF 109Gs from the fourth group. But Ta-152 pilots' initial satisfaction soon turned to horror as the BF-109s opened fire at them. Oberleutnant Stahl broke radio silence and told the Messerschmitts to keep on climbing and retain formation. But the two groups were using different frequencies and the BF-109s kept attacking. Ta-152 pilots had no choice but to break formation and defend themselves. Apparently, the BF-109 pilots were not adequately informed of the new type and assumed it to belong to the Allies. In the resulting chaos, a formation of Mustangs approached and attacked the German aircraft. BF-109s of the Ford Group has suffered the most, losing no less than 13 aircraft. The unit consisted mostly of former bomber pilots with Eastern Front experience only. Ta-152 suffered no losses, but again failed to score against the enemy. As the group had didn't receive additional Ta-152 airframes, the remaining operational aircraft were transferred to the headquarters flight, or Stabschwamp, based at Stendal, west of Berlin. During the transfer, one Ta-152 flown by Ober Fenrich Joni Wiegeshoff crashed on landing probably due to failed propeller pitch control. The pilot was killed. In that period, Ta-152 mostly flew top cover missions for the second group of aircraft on takeoffs and landings. Only one FW-190D was lost while Ta-152s were flying cover and the tank aircraft suffered no losses. On 13 March, Oberfeldwebel Willi Reschke took off in late afternoon to intercept the Mosquito. The German airplane was vectored on the British aircraft, which was now returning to base at over 9,000 meters of altitude. Reschke approached to several hundred meters behind the Mosquito and slightly under it. But as he was about to open fire, his aircraft shook and decelerated rapidly. The cause was the supercharger failure and Reschke had no choice but to descend and return to base. Reliability plagued the Ta-152, which was obviously suffering from quality issues due to rush production and supply limitations. On 10 April 1945, a Ta-152 pilot claimed a probable kill against an enemy aircraft. We mentioned the two earlier claims, but this is the first one that is described in detail. It was after 7 p.m. when four aircraft took off from Zahau, led by Oberstleutnant Fritz Aufhammer. They were patrolling over the Braunschweig area. When they reached the altitude of 10,000 meters, Josef Jupp Keil spotted a flight of about 15 P-47 Thunderbolts below them. 
He tightened up on Alfhammer's aircraft and pointed out to enemy fighters using hand gestures. The commander didn't initially understand, so Karl came even closer. But Alfhammer apparently didn't want to attack American fighters and gesticulated to Kyle that he could do it himself if he wanted to. Kyle decided to attack alone, and he dived on the Thunderbolts. P-47 pilots spotted the Ta-152, and they made defensive turns. Despite the great closure rate, Kyle opened fire on one enemy aircraft and observed hits. Kyle immediately pulled back on his stick and used his speed to climb away from combat. He only claimed the probable kill since he didn't observe pilot bailing out or the airplane crashing. On that same day, the unit was getting ready to evacuate their airbase as American ground troops were approaching. Next morning, 11 April 1945, all airworthy aircraft took off with American tanks literally meters away from the airbase perimeter. TA-152s eventually settled in Neustadt Glewe, about 170 kilometers northwest of Berlin. The airfield was located in a wooded area, suitable for camouflaging aircraft. Almost immediately after their arrival, TA-152s were tasked with protecting other aircraft from their Geschwader, which were to attack American mechanized units in the area of their former airbase at Stendal. Once there, the Ta-152 pilots spotted several P-47s. They tried to attack the American fighters, which chose to disengage. Yup Kyle was again able to claim one Thunderbolt, which failed to escape on time. This was part 1 of our video about Ta-152 in combat. The new German fighter didn't have an impressive start, and in part 2, you will be able to see its most famous battle. Press the like button if you liked the video, join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal to ensure future content, and keep watching Showtime 112.